Hey, good afternoon. This is Joshua Nagelberg, meteorologist with Carolina Weather Authority, and we just got rid of Laura, and we got rid of uh, potentially what could have been a severe outbreak in the Carolinas and Mid-Atlantic. Didn't really unfold the way it looked like it might yesterday, and things are definitely a lot nicer today, but that's not going to last much longer. Uh, so we're going to talk about a lot going on here in the tropics over the next couple of days. And I uh, apologize for that. Let me uh, get off your screen here so that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at Carolina WX Authority for the latest articles and what's going on in the tropics. All right, so here's the map this afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Two areas are going to be doing battle for Nana here. One's going to be probably Nana and the other Omar. Tough to say which is which. Uh, look like this one here could develop into Nana first, close to home. Uh, that, of course, not going to be a problem for us once it gets away from land on Tuesday. But now we've got something else that uh, is doing battle in the Eastern Caribbean, and that maybe has a better chance of getting to Nana. The uh, consolation prize is Omar. And, oh, by the way, two other waves coming off the African coast. One here has a 30% chance of developing over the next few days, and the other one has a 20% chance. And I don't think these are going to develop quite as quickly as these two. Uh, I'll show you why. But there's definitely more to come after that across Africa. And um, somebody blessed the rains off of Africa this month because it's insane. So we could have uh, Nana and Omar by the end of August. Um, of course, we'd have to do it by midnight tomorrow night. Uh, if not, um, you know, then our forecast was wrong. We weren't going to get four storms. We'd only have two or three. Uh, but by September 2nd, I think we do have them. So a couple days just between you and me. All right, so here's the satellite image, and you can see the air masses here. Um, this system has uh, yet to move off the coast of Florida, so it's got a little time before it could develop, uh, but that's definitely something that could occur here in the next uh, day or so as it moves off over the Gulf Stream and then across the uh, northern western Atlantic. And the good news about this one is it's not going to be a threat to land at this point. Just going to move over the uh, fish here in the northwest Atlantic. This one, on the other hand, though, could be a threat to land, and um, I think... When we show you the new models that are being run on it, there's definitely threat for that to happen. Um, very good area of thunderstorm activity at this point in the Southeast Caribbean. But what I'm going to show you here is that um, it's going to struggle for a while due to this huge dome of dry air in place. Actually, this is the Saharan um, dust layer here across the um, eastern Atlantic, and that's already extending into the Central Caribbean. Notice how dry and quiet things are across Cuba, Jamaica, and Central America. There's just nothing to write home about right now, but that could change as we get further into the upcoming week. Uh, behind it, we've got an area of clouds that probably does not develop into anything. You can, again, see that dry air, but then two waves to watch, one here, one here. And oh, by the way, there's more across Africa, which I'm going to show you here in just a little bit. Um, let me take you over to that Meteosat satellite, and this is from um, RAMB from uh, Colorado State. And I'm going to zoom that in for you guys here so you can take a better look at it. Um, okay, so here is the area that's probably not going to develop. This area could. This one may be a little bit better chance. Here's another wave here, and there's just plenty more. So Africa's about to give birth to probably five waves here in the next two weeks. Pretty crazy. So not unexpected for September, um, but things are definitely more active than in a usual season in this part of Africa. So a lot to be concerned with down the road. The uh, water temperature anomalies are still fairly warm across a good chunk of the area close to the coast. Uh, the exception is off the Louisiana coast where we had Hurricane Laura last week, uh, but this should warm back up based on temperature forecasts in the coming days. It's pretty darn hot here, large region of high pressure over the western Gulf, so this will eventually get wiped out, and again, we could be setting the stage for more activity in the Gulf in September. Uh, remember 2005, we had Katrina, and then three or four weeks later we had Rita, and then we had Wilma. I'm not saying that's going to be the case again, but it's possible, especially if you look at how warm the waters are right now. The ocean heat content still remains fairly high across the Bay of Campeche and western Gulf of Mexico, very high in the northwestern Caribbean and remaining fairly high as well around the Bahamas. And, uh, of course, tails off once he gets east of the Caribbean. So the waves coming into this area don't have a lot of uh, potential heat to deal with right off the bat to become a major storm. But as they get closer to land, then that development looks a lot more likely. A look at the wind shear analysis shows this large region of high pressure across um, the um, northern part of Mexico and across a good chunk of the southern Gulf, and that's going to fend storms off for a while. We do have some wind shear and some dry air coming into this region here across the northwest Caribbean. That's why we're not seeing anything right now on the map. Um, and more easterlies, typical trade winds across the southern Caribbean. But wind shear is not super high. What is high is the amount of dry air. So that's what's keeping this wave from forming right away. 
Um, also, you look at the wind shear, and it's uh, a little bit more unfavorable from the Carolinas north, so whatever comes through here is not going to become a major storm. Um, you also have some wind shear over the central Atlantic to keep an eye on as well. Uh, but overall, the uh, wind shear has dropped off quite a bit. This is the um, the mean line, of course, and we've been below across uh, part uh, for July and for much of August. And right now we're about to drop below average wind shear as we head into September. And I'm going to show you more about that in a little bit. And in the Caribbean, we've been below average on the wind shear since about uh, August 20th, which we've talked about in, in uh, videos we've had out before. All right, so we now have Invest 99L in the Eastern Caribbean. Let me show you the satellite for that. Not very organized, but um, definitely a large area of showers and storms to keep an eye on. So the models are now being run on this. And um, the low pressure center here uh, to the west of looks like uh, Guadalupe. And uh, we'll be tracking across the southern parts of the Caribbean. And some dry air will probably circulate in from the mountains of Venezuela. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Um, this is our other disturbance, which hasn't really even emerged off the coast, and it looks fairly disorganized. There's a lot of showers and storms well off the coast, uh, but the area that's expected to develop has not moved offshore yet. There's a kind of a jet stream max here. As that comes over the water in the next two days, it's got a better shot. And I'll show you the radar from Florida, and maybe a circulation will try to form in here. It hasn't really done so yet. Um, but notice how there's nothing going on over northeast Florida. Things are pretty quiet. Same goes for southeast, southeast Georgia. Um, so right now, not an urgent threat for something to develop. So both of these storms are going to be kind of battling each other to see which one gets to Nana first. And uh, it could take a little bit more time for that to happen, we think. All right, so here is the intensity forecast on that 99L. Right now, well below storm strength, but could get there by Monday night or Tuesday morning. And then notice the model's... This is Central America, so either it's going to continue on to the north of Central America, north of Honduras, like the ship model says, or it's going to uh, get impacted by land and weaken. So again, these are just the very early stages of these models coming out. Not a lot to trust in these yet, but they do show gradual development towards the middle part of next week. Um, here is the uh, Global Ensemble Forecast System. You can see uh, eventually some development is expected in the Central Caribbean and then potentially up in here if it does stay to the north of Honduras, kind of like Marco did last, I guess, a week, week or maybe a little over a week ago from now. And the GEFS parallel kind of shows the same thing, by the way. Uh, the ensemble from Weather Bell shows, um, again, we've got spaghetti plots in pretty good agreement here for the most part. And the big question mark is, does it hit Honduras or does it stay to the north and hit Belize or does it do both? Uh, but right now, the way the models are, are pointed, it looks like it's going to stay south of any of the United States at this point. So that's good news for us. Maybe bad news, though, for Belize. Um, now let's take a look at uh, weathermodels.com for a look at the European ensembles. And I'll blow that up for you guys. And you can see there's a few ensembles that do develop this into a tropical storm, maybe even a Category 1 hurricane if it can manage to slip north of Honduras and impact Belize. And the time frame for that is looking like it's going to be around September 3rd or 4th, so at the very end of this upcoming week, maybe the beginning of next weekend. Here is that other system we're going to keep an eye on. Right now, development not looking too likely until it gets all the way to the north of Bermuda, and then it could be a tropical storm at that point. And here are other waves off of Africa. Not a lot of agreement right now. Some small hints at maybe development at this point. Uh, the next wave, maybe a little bit of development. But right now, um, things are okay for the United States, at least for the next 5 to 10 days. After that, could change. Um, so I showed you guys all of these and um, showed you that as well. Here's the HWERF being run on Invest 99L. And you can see it keeps the system just north of Aruba and um, Bonaire and Curacao um, through Monday morning. And development is going to be very slow at that point. Then uh, maybe a circulation gets going near or to the south of Jamaica by Tuesday. But it's still just a weak tropical storm on the H-Wharf. It takes until maybe later Wednesday to start uh, getting going to the north of Honduras. And if it does stay north of Honduras, I could see how that definitely happens. But we could have a tropical storm by Wednesday into Thursday. And um, maybe even some quick intensification if it gets pulled into Belize here in the right spot at the right time by Thursday into Friday. Uh, but it's not looking like it's going to reemerge over the Bay of Campeche. Now, the HMON model, on the other hand, um, does show a little bit quicker development here in the next two days, and that could be on to something, but it's still going to struggle into Tuesday and Wednesday as it comes by south of Jamaica. And finally, in the Western Caribbean, Tuesday night um, and into Wednesday, we have a, a formidable tropical storm, and then it looks like the HMON, if it's right, could have a hurricane north of Honduras, 
um, and then approaching Belize as a hurricane, perhaps a Category 1, maybe a strong tropical storm at this point. That's going to be on Thursday morning, and then the track takes it across Central America and into southern Mexico, re-emerging over the Gulf of Tehuantepec on the Pacific side of Mexico. So right now, I'm not too worried about this system for the Gulf, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Here's the GFS. Let's look farther into the future. You can see this area forming Tuesday morning off the Carolina coast, but moving away along this old frontal boundary. And here is uh, the next potential system. And by the way, here's a couple more behind it. And actually, let me um, make this a little bit larger for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. Um, this is Tuesday night and into Wednesday, and you can see um, nothing impacting the U.S. at this point, um, but we've got, you know, several waves that we're watching. Um, but again, nothing expected to come up into this high-pressure ridge right here. Um, with this system moving out, this one going across Central America, um, hang on, let me back that up a little bit, and maybe, maybe re-emerging into the Bay of Campeche, but more than likely affecting um, Mexico. This system going way out to sea, then we're watching these next three waves uh, by the end of this week into next weekend. And then beyond, we'll have to see if something could develop. Uh, certainly it's possible. Uh, tough to really gauge this far out in advance, but um, you can see this model does. Uh, GFS on the 14th has something off the East Coast that we'll have to keep an eye on, um, and perhaps development closer to the coast. But again, it's speculating. It's uh, 16 days out from now. Uh, the Canadian model, kind of the same deal at this point. You can see the low pressure tracks. Let me uh, zoom that down for you a little bit. Here's the one system forming close to the Outer Banks, but moving away on Tuesday morning. Here's the other one down here affecting potentially Honduras on Wednesday. And you can see uh, two low pressure systems out here out of these waves. We'll see how they tend to develop. Um, in fact, if you believe uh, the Canadian next weekend, we could have two tropical storms out here. We'll have to keep an eye on that, of course. Um, and uh, upper low in here could pick this up and maybe it gets stuck for a while before it tries to come back around this high pressure system. So we've got at least till about September 10th before we're really concerned about anything in the U.S., I think. The Icon model is doing something kind of similar to the Canadian. Let me uh, zoom that out. You can see it does have a low-end tropical storm coming in here toward Honduras. Omar potentially coming up this way, north of Bermuda. Here are two uh, tropical waves that are next to come off of Africa later this week. And uh, some, some funny stuff going on here with the Icon. Got a little Fujiwara going on next weekend, uh, but nothing intense at that point. One of these will probably take over. And again, it's still at least two weeks away from potentially the U.S. By the way, another low here. Um, and finally, we'll take a look at the uh, weekly um, bulk shear. And uh, right now you can see how fairly low it is across the um, much of the Atlantic. And it uh, stays that way. This is a... Uh, next week, by the way, next weekend into the following week, stays lower than average. And then the following week stays quite low, right through the peak of hurricane season. So the 10th to 20th of September, that wind shear is unseasonably lower than average. Um, but again, we're going to have to see if the moisture is going to be in play there as well. Uh, so two things that we're watching, and you can notice uh, the wind shear starts to pick back up later into September. So maybe um, it'll be tougher to get something to come up here and stay strong. But again, that could change. And then heading into October, the um, wind shear doesn't look particularly strong. So again, uh, with the right MJO pattern, with the right amount of warmth, and uh, keeping the dry air off of Africa, we could have more systems to worry about even heading into October. All right, one last note for you guys before we um, get this video off the air. Um, we do have a typhoon, which is likely going to be rapidly intensifying south of uh, Kadena, which is an air base on, um, over on, um, I'm drawing a blank here, on the southwestern part of um, Japan, uh, but likely to be a Category 4 or maybe even Category 5 typhoon, super typhoon, as that heads up to near Kadena Air Base. Okinawa, that's the island. And then looks like uh, we'll make a right bend and perhaps threaten Busan in South Korea as maybe a Category 2 or 3. There's some models that take it right through the thread here, east of uh, west of Japan and east of Korea, and then right up towards North Korea and into Russia, but at that point it's weakening. So uh, here's that system on satellite, and I'll show it to you real fast here. Uh, definitely starting to pick up some steam um, to the south of Okinawa, which is here. This is Taiwan. This is Luzon in the Philippines and could intensify rapidly over the next 48 hours. All right, so a lot going on in the tropics, folks. Uh, make sure you're on your toes because we're not done. We're maybe getting a brief break here, but things are going to get busier once again. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as more videos are likely to come out. Y'all have a great weekend. Be safe and God bless.